is. Looks like our guest uh, Julian the Hug Jackson and his son Julius the Chef Jackson are uh, joining us now in studio. Hey. How you, How, doing? You doing? How you doing? How you doing? Take a seat. Good. How you doing? All right. Either one. Either one. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, man? Great. Good, man. How you doing, Chad? Good, man. Good, man. Good to see you. Good to see you. So, is this cold? Is this cold for the compared to the Bahamas? To the Virgin Islands. Virgin uh, Islands. East Las Vegas. Yeah, a little bit. Mm. A little. Man, you sound like you almost speak Spanish. Muy poquito. <laughs> oh. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> you too? A little bit, yeah. Oh, okay. We spent a lot of time in Puerto Rico, so. Oh, yeah. nice, yeah. nice. In I've Mexico, been there. In Mexico, too. Yeah, what Mexico. parts of Mexico? Oh, man, uh, Chavez. Uh, I fought on his undercard so many times, mm. yeah, you know, and uh, we went up in the mountains, man. Oh, yeah. my gosh. What a time. <laughs> what a time. It, it was, it's just amazing. Uh, I remember going up there, running, and uh, those guys uh, set me up. Yeah, the air. You know, say trying to keep up with Chavez, man. And I was running. Yeah. Let me tell you something, man. <laughs> when I reached a, a, a few yards, my chest started to cave in, <laughs> <laughs> and I just couldn't breathe. I stopped, you know. And um, those guys started to laugh at me, and uh, yeah. they said, "Man, Julian, man, you you're tough, man. You're tough." Said we, you know, maybe we tried that, but we couldn't reach. Uh, the distance that you made it, it was just amazing. I said, man, you guys got to be kidding me. <laughs> but the altitude, man, it was so high. Oh, yeah. my that, goodness. That was probably at the, uh, so the Mexican uh, Olympic Training Center is, is in the mountains out there in Mexico. So, mm. you know, just to get to the top, it's about like an hour and a half drive. And so that's, yeah, man. that's yeah. where people go up to run up there in the Mexican Olympic Training Center. Yes. Mm. The mountains out there. Man, and you got to run the mountains with... Julio Cesar Chavez? Yeah, man. Nice. Yeah, you know, and uh, it was a tremendous uh, opportunity. It was a tremendous time, uh, you know, seeing the world. You know, boxing is amazing, man. And uh, I tip my hat to all, you know, the, the, the fighters out there, you know, that been, you know, I, I think sacrificing their lives, mm -hmm. you know, just to show that, hey, the sport of boxing has done a lot for so many of us, you know, and... Um, uh, again, you know, I, I just want to, you know, lift up all the, the champions, the new champions that are out there now that are really, uh, I think, making new uh, head roads. Uh, uh, what shall I call it? Uh, you know, new uh, uh, pavements, <laughs> you know, but they're doing a lot, man, for boxing, and um, I'm excited about that. Julian, I, I want to talk about the reason you're in Vegas. You're here tonight. Um, in the corner of uh, Gerald McClendon Jr. That's right. That's right. You guys have a, a fight tonight, and you know, just talk to us. How how'd you get to work? We had Gerald here in the studio. Obviously, the the history between you and his father. And, yeah. You know, obviously the terrible accident and whatnot. You know, talk to us about working with Gerald McClendon Jr. and um, what do you expect from him tonight? Well, yeah, I man. Look, let me tell you something, and uh, I believe it's it's destiny. You know. Um, the way things just happened, Julius was supposed to be on this card, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And uh, he got an injury. Mm. And yeah. um, next thing you know, um, uh, he said that Gerald was reaching out to us on um, Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. And um, and then we had just talked to his aunt. Aunt, yeah. Uh, and, you know, and I did, I did, I did a, lot, so a lot of work with his dad, tried to help him out a whole lot. And uh, we became very good friends, you know, um, really didn't really, and realized that he had a son that was, you know, into boxing, mm. you know, until, uh, you know, Julius uh, started to, you know, uh, I, I believe, reach out to him or he reached out to Julius yeah, on reached. Instagram. Mm. And then we started to connect. And next thing you know, boom, you know, we decided that let's go. You know, we're going to do something with this kid. And um, uh, believe me, he has a heart uh, of a fighter. And... Um, I, I, his hands are very heavy too. He's, he only has one fight, you know, and um, uh, he's coming up from, from, from scratch. He only has about 15 amateur fights, you know what I'm saying? So he's a, he's a gem, 
he's a he's a a, a, a a diamond in the rough you know what I'm saying and he has a lot to offer and um you know I'm glad that uh you know I'm the one that uh right now is going to be working with him and um tonight you're gonna really see what 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 um you know is behind of all of this so what drives you to continue to be in the sport like obviously- oh man uh I'm telling you look Boxing is 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 almost like uh, my life. <laughs> you know, uh, I love the sport. Um, you know, when I started out boxing, I you know I was I mean I was a nobody. You know, and um, truly uh, I had a low self esteem about myself. Mm. You know, but when I got into boxing, man, it did something to me and uh, it shifted things around. And um, I believe it's because of uh, the grace of God, and um, you know. Uh, that, that, that in itself was a journey for me. And coming from the Virgin Islands, you know, I realized that in order for me to do anything, to become something, I had to take a chance. You know what I'm saying? Life is not worth it if you don't take a chance. Absolutely not. You know what I'm saying? And I took that chance. And uh, I, 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 you know, and I decided that, look, I'm going to do my best and I'm going to become a champion in the Virgin Islands. I don't have to go outside of the Virgin Islands. Uh, I believe I had everything there. My my trainer, Willie William George, he was the best coach that I've ever known, man. And, um, you know, he taught me everything. And, um, uh, you know, the rest is history. And after that, you know, uh, uh, became world champion and people were, the doubters became believers, you know, that hey, you can become anything if you just put your heart in it, you know, if you put your mind in it, if you love this thing. Uh, you can make it work for you. And that's what happened, man. Hawk, obviously some legendary fights that you gave us, some great fights that we get to go go back and, and cherish and, and, you know, just watch and learn from and appreciate. For you, what is, uh, you know, some of the most memorable moments of your career that may maybe may surprise us, things that we don't expect from yeah, you? Yeah, for sure. You know, a lot of people look at the big names, but uh, there was a fight that uh, nobody really talked about, and it's, uh, it was against Kudalix uh, uh, in Connecticut. Um, I think there was a fight either after the Mike McCollum when I lost against Mike McCollum, and uh, that was a comeback fight. And um, man, what a fight. Uh, I knocked him down, he knocked me down, and then I ended up knocking him out, you know, and... Um, it, it, this kid was tough, man, and um, it, it was a, a fight that I could remember. I, you know, there's no ifs and buts about it. You know, that fight with Kudalix was a fight that I can remember again. But um, Terry Norris, uh, Buster Drayton, you know, these guys are, are names that you know a lot of people know about. And um, I tell you what, uh, Terry Norris was a very, uh, you know, flashy fighter. He was a boxer, speed. But uh, my timing, I think, was um, uh, something that a lot of people uh, sort of like, you know, look over. Um, I can time you. I don't care how fast you are. And um, that's what I did with uh, Terry Norris and uh, a lot of other fighters. And I was timed myself, too. (laughs) (laughs) By Gerald McLennan, man. (laughs) Now you're working with your with With his son. With his son. How, you know... uh, is, is that a bit crazy to you? I know. I mean, yeah, I know. A lot of people, you know, you know as a matter of fact, um, what's his name? Um, Roy? Roy Jones. Roy, yes. Roy name. Jones said, how did this happen? You know? And I said, man, I, I believe this is, uh, uh, des- this is this is just destiny, you know? Mm. And um, we connected, and um, boy, things just started to happen. And um, I, I love this kid, and... Um, you know, I'm 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 a hundred percent willing to to stand with him, work with him. Uh, it has nothing to do, you know, with with uh, me and his father being legends. You know what I'm saying? I really believe that uh, this kid has a heart, and he wants to make you know um, history. And um, I I I I I believe that somebody was there for me, and I'm glad that I can stand there for Gerald McLennan. And um, uh, it's just a blessing to have his, you know, his son, Gerald's son, you know. I'm training his son. And I think it's it's really going to uh, lift some eyebrows, uh, you know, and it's already starting to. 
What What are some of the differences you feel um, you guys have or advantages you have for, for bringing a fighter out to the Virgin Islands versus training here in the States? Well, um, well, Gerald, been, he's in the States, but uh, we have a fighter, you know, that is uh, born. I mean, uh, well, I shouldn't say he's born. I don't think he's from the Virgin Islands, but he's been there from the time he was a kid. His family is. Yeah, his family is from the Virgin Islands. You know, his roots is from the Virgin Islands. So uh, I'm talking about Dion Pewitt. And uh, he's 5 and 0 oh with four knockouts. And, um, you know, we, we brought him up from scratch, you know. And um, I really believe that, um, you know, training in the Virgin Islands, it's, it's, it, there's, you know, there's a lot of benefits. Uh, weight, you know, you won't have a lot of weight problems, I'll tell you that. Because of the heat, the climate? Uh, the climate has a lot to do with it, you know what I'm saying? Um, food? Fresh air, food. Um, you know, I really believe that uh, me being in the Virgin, coming from the Virgin Islands, staying in the Virgin Islands, it proved that, hey, you know, man, you can make it in the islands and um, you can, I believe, um, benefit from the surroundings and from the, uh, you know, fresh air, breeze, you know, whatever you want to, you know, fish, sea. You know, we did a lot of sea work with um, with Gerald. And, hey, he uh, told us you guys had him swimming <laughs> in the ocean. That's right. <laughs> and uh, there's a lot of things that a lot of people may not, you know, realize could help them. And um, the ocean is uh, is something that, uh, you know, heals your body, man. It tightens your body. You know, it does a lot of uh, good for you. And uh, I think that's why maybe my career was really a, a career that took me a long way. Um I'm not punch drunk, thank God. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Sound great. Yeah, I've been through wars. You know, you what I'm look saying? good, man. Yeah, you I know. look super young. Like outside of the salt and pepper, like your skin <laughs> looks really good. I always tell people, man, I've, I've been too long in the sea, you know, and the sand got in my hair. Ah. It, it wouldn't come out. <laughs> <laughs> I Yo, want, and the I fact want... that you got a full head, you still got the flat top. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Like, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's the hog, man. Yeah, man, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, the Virgin Islands is is, is, is a paradise, you know, and, um, you know, we, we are hoping sometime, you know, to... to you know, create a, a boxing gym that I believe will attract a lot of fighters to come mm -hmm. and get themselves in tremendous condition. Gerald said, Julian, I have never been 170 pounds. You know, he said, I, I made it to 70. Mm -hmm. He said, man, I, that's crazy. I said, man, champ, listen, anything is possible if you put your mind to it, mm. you know, and um, again, um, you know, just like, you know, here, I'm, I'm, I'm just glad to be a part of this. You know, you guys have been doing tremendous things in boxing, for boxing. You know what I'm saying? And um, it's a sport that I believe, I mean, just, just connect bridges. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks. So, Julius, man, I want to ask you, obviously, it's unfortunate yeah. that you are not able to be on this card, but I'm assuming that you help your father in making uh, the optimal best camp for a fighter because you're a chef. So are you in charge of uh, preparation of meals for the fighters that would come through to the doors? And what's the name of the gym that you got? What's the name of the facility? Do you have one? Is it yeah. like a training camp that you guys are <laughs> having or is this one fighter at a time? Yeah. Um, I mean, we, we, we trying to take it to another level uh, right now. Um, uh, it's, it's not super easy because I, I do a lot of things at home myself. You know, I'm, I own my own business. I run restaurants, uh, you know, things like that. So I, I'm not fully, like, in charge. But uh, with, in Gerald's case, um, you know, he stayed with me. He was at my house. You know, he stayed with me, and um, I just was making sure. Because he, he's still new to the game. He's still new to the game. So I was teaching him different things, how he should eat uh, to maintain the weight, keep the weight. So I even did that with uh, in Triple G's camp. You know, I was Triple G's sparring partner for four years. Uh, and so we, I used to do that too up there. So I have a little experience. Maybe once we open that that new gym, <laughs> he's talking about, uh, and uh, we actually have guys staying at the gym. Um, I, I think we'll implement something like that. Um, but we'll get there. I think we'll get there. We get a lot of people reaching out to us all the time. Uh, David Benavidez trained with us one time. Uh, we had a kid in the Virgin Islands. That's yeah, right. Yeah. He was wow. my main spar mate when I fought uh, Jose uh, Uzgatigui. So he trained with us, and he, they, uh, him and his dad are like, yeah, we're going to come back. we come back. Uh, and so we, we, we plan to set up something that um, fighters can come out there, get away from wherever they're at. You know, it's, it's not a big city. Uh, you know, it's a lot of hills. It's just a lot of paradise, really, just uh, 
the beaches and uh it's great for workout the weather's great all year round you know what i'm saying uh, it, unless we get a hurricane <laughs> but all year Said round that's so casually <laughs> all year round it's uh beautiful weather and uh you can train run it's it's perfect so yeah. So how far out are you guys from the actual facility that you want to open, the gym itself? Uh, I don't know, man. What do you think, Pop? Like like a year and a half, maybe, that, that new building? Uh, right, um, right. Um, that FEMA's going to redo. Uh, yeah, we, we, we have a, um, a home, re really. Uh, right now, where we are training, um, you know, it's uh, right now with the government. You yeah. know, I've, I've been working with the government and I uh, got a tremendous job there. I uh, love that's why I'm here right now, you know what I'm saying? And um uh I run the 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 boxing program. Oh nice. Yeah. So it's a free program? Yeah, for, yes. for the youth. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's a free program and uh hundreds of kids come through this program. Yeah. You don't have to want to be a boxer to be in the program. Mm -hmm. You know, you just want to get involved, you want to get in shape, you want that's to learn, right. you want to be disciplined. Uh you can come to I believe I can fly boxing program. That's amazing. How long have you been doing that? Oh man, uh, man, over ten years. Mm. <laughs> ten, over wow. ten years. I feel like it's more than that. Yeah, it's more. I know it's more than that, but yeah. uh, you know, I, I would just say over ten years. I don't think there's any legends training, especially like because that's the equivalent what we have of like a boys and girls club. I'm assuming. Basically, yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> serious. Yeah. Come on, Almanac. Any legends training at a boy? The only one, and and you know, I I I, I can't call him a legend. Obviously, he's he's a great trainer in boxing. Would be Barry Hunter. He Damn. has sort of a boys and girls club in the in the city, and that he runs with uh, Patrick Harris. Um, but definitely not a legend. That's that's something huge. I mean, that a child can just you're yeah. accessible. Right, yeah, yeah. that's right. great. We that's have had great. um we have had uh people like um what's his name that came down there that did uh, um a boxing event. Oh, Jab Zab, Judah, man. Zab, yeah. yeah. Okay. The okay. Kid. Oh, he did the celebrity boxing. Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Yeah. On the I Virgin remember. Islands. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. and he came to the gym. Oh man, it was a, it was a tremendous treat for the for those kids. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So how long has it been since you've been in the states? Oh man, well I travel a lot. Um, you know. We go back and forth, um, you know, with Dion. Um, yeah, I do a lot of traveling myself, you know, with my family. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but uh, as far as boxing is concerned now, um, I've traveled the world, you know what I'm saying, um, with amateurs. Yeah. You know, um, I've taken guys to China, to, wow. oh, man, all over the world. You know what I'm saying? Um, three of my sons have uh, made it to the Olympics. You know, Julius, John, and Clayton. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I had the fourth guy, which is um, Dion. Yeah, Dion, but, go. but what happened is that the coronavirus, the man, pandemic, yeah. the pandemic really messed things up there. And uh, it kind of reminded me of my, my situation because when I was, um, you know, getting ready to go to the Olympics, uh, four, Jimmy Carter. With four fights? <laughs> Jimmy Carter literally uh, stopped the United States from going because of the conflict that we were having with, uh, I think, Germany or somebody. Uh, and, yeah, uh, Russia or Germany? Yeah. Russia, one of those. Damn, Russia again, huh? Russia again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I I so. They just stopped them now. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Uh, we, we uh, 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 that's how, that's the reason why I turned pro, because I didn't get the opportunity to go to the Olympics, and I turned pro. And here it is, um, I had the opportunity through my sons to make it to the Olympics 2008, 2000, you know, 16. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just amazing. Uh, and the, 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 the amazing thing about that, I had four sons in the Olympics. You know what I'm saying? Four of my sons made it to the Olympics. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, I don't know if that's something that ever been done. I don't know. It, it hasn't. Wow. Well, yeah. It's, it's uh, just amazing. And um, uh, you by, you know, boxing, Gian by boxing, Clayton by boxing, and JD, my, my oldest son, by referee, he's a, yeah, coach. He was a, he's a, a a tremendous um coach and um as well as um referee, mm -hmm. you know, and he's been um, involved in boxing with me in the Virgin Islands, and uh, the kids love him. And um, again, you know, I just I just you know I just feel so proud that um, I had the opportunity, man, to be a boxer. Mm. You know what I'm saying in life, you know, some people, uh, you know. 
were, you know, attorneys, teachers, uh, you know what I mean? Fireman, police officer. But um, you know, I'm, I was a professional boxer. And uh, it's different, you know? And um, In what of, way? Um, I, I be, because of the, 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 or the sacrifice. Oh, man, I know we all have to make sacrifice. But boxing, a lot of people say it's dangerous, you mm-hmm. know? And uh, I didn't see it as being something that is threatening to my life. You saw it as a way out. I saw it as a way out. I saw it as you know reaching that, ped- that you know the pedestal, that getting to that that the top of the hill. Huck, so 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 tell us about your story, right? Because obviously the Virgin Islands is not a place we hear many fighters coming out of. Right. And obviously you changed that. Yeah. You know. So so how did you get into the sport and and wow. was there other people in the virgin islands previous to you that you were looking up to now uh, you're gonna bring the preacher out of me bro <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what it. we need you're gonna bring the preacher out of me now <laughs> man you know I, I tell you what like i said I, I had a low self-esteem my mother i was a mama boy mm. you know uh, my mother said shout out you, dennis duglin if you don't find if you don't find some place to go <laughs> if you don't find a program to get into you know what i mean i I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna whip you every day. I'm gonna beat you every day. I said, Ma. She said, uh, and I have a friend by the name of Beza, Irving Beza, and he said, Julian, I'm in, you know, I'm in the boxing program. Come with me. And I went with him and um I met Willie and he pointed his finger at me and I looked behind of me because he couldn't be talking to me. He said, I'm gonna make you a champion. And I looked behind, I says, Who is he talking to? Can't be me. <laughs> and he said, I'm gonna make you a champion. He said, You, I'm talking to you. And I said, Me? He said, Yeah. And I went up, man, and I listened to this guy, and he spoke about the things that he's, he's you know, he's been through in boxing, where he's been, the places he's been. And I said, Wow. And I wanted to do that. And I actually, you know, decided mm-hmm. that I'm gonna join the gym. And I joined the gym, and the rest is history. But the thing is, man, what I went through. Oh my goodness! What I went through in boxing, I I I, I almost got crippled. You know what I'm saying? How? Uh, um, I you know you you guys, there's a fruit called kennep. It's a kennep tree. It's a fruit, a sweet uh, fruit. And I was up in the tree, and uh, I was reaching out to a branch, and something popped in my back. Mm. Something popped, and all of a sudden. My legs went numb. Oh, wow. Mm. My legs went numb. And thank God um, I fell, but I fell in a, on a branch. I hang on a branch. And uh, I was crying out. I said, hey, guys, I can't move. And next thing you know, uh, these guys took me out of the tree, went to the hospital. And they, they told me that um, uh, one of my um, spine or my nerve got Caught or something. Pinched. Pinched. I thought it was the end. <laughs> oh, man. I thought it was the end. but I, I don't think I ever heard that story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Serious, man. This is That's way crazy. back. And um, i tell you what. Um, my ma, she, she started praying and uh, believing God that, um, you know, he's going to heal me and touch me. And uh, I was about, you know, I was about maybe five years in amateur boxing, mm-hmm. believe it or not. And... Um, I, I, you know, I really started to, you know, come to my own in my boxing career as an amateur, and uh, I thought my career was over. And um, next thing you know, I woke up, you know what I'm saying, and my back, I got the feeling in my back again, and and um, my life has, you know, changed a whole lot. Then, um, you know, things happen, and next thing you know, boom, um, I'm I'm going to the Pan American Games. You know what I'm saying? I've I've, I've grown in boxing. Uh, a lot of people are talking about me. You know what I'm saying? And um, I'm taking this thing more serious than I've ever taken it. And um, next thing you know, you know I'm, I'm 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 having this opportunity, and then it got shut when um, you know Jimmy Carter said you can't go. Mm. America can't go to the games. Next thing you know. Um, these guys start calling me on the phone now. What managers? No. Oh, I'm gonna say something that might shock you. Mm. Okay, give it to me. Some guys start calling me. Three guys call me on the phone, and they were witch doctors. Oh. What? Witch doctors? Yeah. 
witch doctors. And they said to me, um, we can get you the championship. <laughs> Listen to what I'm telling you. Yeah. We can get you the championship, but we need your underwear. What? <laughs> <laughs> We need, <laughs> we need your underwear. We need whatever has your scent. Okay. We need whatever has your scent on it. Not my shirt, my underwear. My underwears. <laughs> that got your scent, all right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, man, I don't believe in that. You know? And my mother told me, she said, you know what? If you, if you go and play with the devil, he plays for keeps. Mm -hmm. He wants blood. Let's go. You know, he wants blood. And, um... I said, no way, man. Next thing you know, a next guy called me. And he's asking the same thing. Mm. I said, what's this, man? You know, <laughs> That's that island guy, life. Two guys, on the, two guys on the phone. And I met one in person. Mm. And he said to me, he said, hey, Julian, man, the last fight you had, you couldn't win that fight. I said, what do you mean? He says, um, you know, the fight with Mike McConnell? Mike McCollum was covered, but you were not covered. I can cover you. Mm -mm. I said, what you mean you could cover me? <laughs> he says, um, you know, just come and... Uh, how much was that going to cost to get covered? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> how many hundreds he wanted to Hun cover you? I'm telling you, hundreds of dollars, I'm sure. And um, I tell him, look, I said, listen to me, man. I'm not involved in that. You know, I you know, I don't want nothing to do we with that. We have something like that. I'm from the Dominican Republic, so ah, I'm, exactly. Yeah, and you, can, you understand what I'm talking about. I understand clearly. On, champ. I know. I know and, exactly and, and what you're talking about. My mother told me, she said, if you, if you play with the fire, you're going to get burned. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I said, I'm not going to do that. And I said, man, I'm going to believe God. Even if I lose, I'm going to lose. I, I, I believe in God. But I was religious. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I really didn't have that relationship with God. But then, you know, uh, 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 I remember uh, getting the opportunity one more time to fight for the title against In Chul Bek. Mm -hmm. Okay? In Chul Bek from Korea. One of the biggest Korean I've ever seen. <laughs> and here it is. Um, I'm traveling, and my brother, who is a pastor... Okay, he went to India, uh, not India, he went to Indiana to, to, to college, Bible college, mm -hmm. came back a pastor. And um, I tell you what, when I was going through that, I didn't, want not, I didn't want nothing to do with him. I didn't want nothing to do with him. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 my mother, I almost, I almost punched my mother. <clears throat> Listen to me, I was so messed up mentally. You know what I'm saying? Going through this thing. And my trainer said, Julian, this is your last chance. You know what I'm saying? This is your last chance. Okay? You you messed, you messed. didn't make it with Mike McCollum. No. You're, you're given this opportunity again. Don King did what he had to do. You know what I'm saying? But now it's your time to step up. But let me tell you something, man. I was so messed up mentally. Uh, I believe the devil was really trying to pull one on me. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, when I heard that this is my opportunity now. I realized that, hey, you know what? Uh, maybe I should go to these guys. And I went to my mother again, you know, and I said, Mom, I have the opportunity again, and, and um, maybe I should go. She said, no, don't go. She said, if you go, believe me, they're going to want your blood. And I said, okay, Mom, you know what? I'm not going to go. I'm going to believe. I'm going to believe what you tell me. I'm going to believe. I was going on what my mother says. Mm -hmm. You see, I was a mama, you know, I was a mother, mama boy. And uh, my mother was my, my, my everything. My dad wasn't there for me. You know what I'm saying? And uh, my mother was everything to me. And she, she convinced me. And I decided that, hey, you know what? I would rather lose. And, uh, you know, to make a long story short, you know, uh, on my way to Las Vegas, it was my worst training camp. Believe me. Um, my, 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 my spa mates were beating me up. Mm. They were beating me up. And before I left St. Thomas, my brother came running to the airport. It was an hour delayed. Okay. The flights were hour delayed. That time they had Pan American yeah. flying around that time. Airlines. Yeah. Airlines. And he came running. Hey, my nickname is Bucci. Bucci, Bucci. <laughs> he says, Hey. God, tell me to tell you, 
not to go. If you accept Jesus Christ, oh, okay. you're going to win the championship. And when I heard that, I would say, wow. I said, that's what I need. And he came, man. There were hundreds of people on the airport. And he grabbed my hand. And I tell you what, it seemed as if everybody disappeared. It come as if everybody disappeared. And I held hand with my brother. And I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I went to Las Vegas, to Sin City. Came here to Sin City. <laughs> <laughs> and here it is. Uh, I'm on this journey now. And um, I know what I've been going through. I know what was, what was, ha was happening to me. And I got in the gym, and I got knocked out in sparring. Wow. <laughs> from a guy by the name of um, Israel Cole. But knocked out or like fake days? No. I Listen to me. I got knocked out. Wow. Listen, when I got up, listen, I, I was in the bathroom and I saw my wife. <laughs> no, seriously, I saw my wife. And I said to my coach, where's my wife? He said, where's your wife? Your wife is in St. Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> where's your wife? I said, yeah, I saw her. I said, what happened? I'm in the shower. I'm in the bathroom. I said, what happened? He said, Julian, you were knocked out. I said, what? <laughs> he said, by Israel Cole. I said, wow. I went home. Went back. I was staying at the Hilton Hotel at that time. And went back. And uh, look, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't. I, look, I know I was being oppressed by the devil. I know it had to have something to do with me not uh, going to those witch doctors. But I, I said, God, I went to prayer. I went on my knees before God, 3 o'clock in the morning. And I went on my knees and I said, God, man, I could have gone to the devil. I didn't know how to pray. Mm -hmm. I just talking to God. I said, but, God, I could have gone to the devil. But I decide not to. And I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust you. And I accepted you on the airport. And I'm asking you to give me back my strength, my timing, my speed, my power. And I tell you what. Something started to rise up in me, and I felt something moving in my, listen, look, I got up on my, look, I got off my knees, I stood up, and I raised my hands, and I said, God, thank you. I heard a small voice, DJ, you know this, telling me, this is going to be your easiest fight. Mm. This is going to be your easiest fight. I knocked on my my trainer's door. <laughs> yeah, Sustin my, was my trainer. Knocked on his door. He said, hey, what's up? <laughs> Three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I said, I, I, I need to talk to you. I opened the door because he was disgusted with me. He thought I was crazy, going crazy. He said, what happened, man? What's up? I said, listen, God just spoke to me. He said, God spoke to you? I said, what did he tell you? Says he's going. This is going to be my easiest fight. He said, "Are you crazy?" <laughs> <laughs> he I says, "Man, you, go back to bed. You got to get up to run in a few hours." <laughs> yeah, I <remember> that. <laughs> Man, I got up. Listen, I went back in my bed. I didn't sleep. Okay, got got up to run. Let me tell you something. I smoke everybody. Okay, I smoke everybody on the track on the field. And he said, "Wow, good run." He says, good run. He, you know, he was like, and, I, and, and I'm like, God told me this is going to be my easiest fight. Now it's time to go back to the gym. And he says, no, this is the last week of sparring. Okay. And uh, I have the opportunity now to redeem myself <laughs> against Israel Cole. So I said, I want this. They said, no. Wait, so you took the rematch? It, no, no. Oh, oh shit, that oh, was sparring, sparring, yeah. sparring. Damn. So they, they're telling he was a middleweight. I but was that a, was the next day? I was a junior middleweight. No, not the next day. No, oh. the next week. No, next week okay. because it happened on a Friday. Listen, so um, he told me, no, 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 you're not going to mess with uh, Israel. You're going to fight with, the, uh, you're going to spar with the other guys. So I said, well, you know what? If you don't give me Israel, I'm not going to spar. Mm. I want Israel. <laughs> okay, give me him first because he was the best. And we normally use the best for the last. You know, right, right. as as, so I said, give him, give it to him, give me him first. He said, okay, you know what? Let's do that. I'm gonna give you him first, and that, that you know, that'll be great. We were scheduled to go three rounds, okay, either three or four rounds. And I uh, tell you what, I went in there, 
my trainer was so he was so um, affected by what happened okay when I started throwing hands on Israel Cole man he was running around the ring yes that's the hawk that's the hawk that's the true hawk you know and uh, uh, my timing my speed my power came back and all I was thinking all I was thinking was what God told me what happened that night on my knees. And you know what? Going back home to the hotel, my trainer said to me, he said, whatever you did, <laughs> do it again. <laughs> <laughs> whatever you did, do, it, do again. it again. And guess what? You did it again. He did it with me. Oh, your trainer prayed with you. My trainer came and started praying with me. And listen to me. My trainer was a Catholic. Mm. And he says, Julian, I, I'm, I'm seeing something, man. And I remember the, in the fight now, Dan King got the news. Dan King found out that you yeah, got knocked out. I got knocked out yeah. in, the, oh, in, the, in, the, in the street yeah. in the spot. <laughs> so here it is now. Fight time comes. I'm in the dressing room. Da Carl King comes in. His son says, "Julian, my dad sent me to tell you, stay away from his right hand. If you get hit, you're gonna get knocked out." And when he said that, I looked at him. I said, man, go and tell Dan King, this is going to be my easiest fight. <laughs> <laughs> I said, go and tell Dan King, this is going to be my easiest fight. And uh, uh, he went and tell you what, he looked at me as if I was crazy too. <laughs> but guess what? Went in there, bang, in the first round. I did exactly what they said, move. I started moving and... Uh, I'm sure Intrubeck thought I was running from him. You know what I'm saying? I was moving, staying away from the right hand. You know, uh, 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 second round, I, I can't tell you if I won the first round or not. But the second round, I told my, my, my coach, I'm going at him. I'm going at him. And I tell you what, we clashed because he thought I was running from him. And I met him in the middle of the ring and I caught him a shot. And I think it was either Joe Cortez. I think so. That fight. Joe Cortez was, and I heard I heard the referee said, "Good shot." <laughs> I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I heard the referee say, "Good shot." <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm telling you, yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> and man, uh, he backed up in the second round, uh, in the corner, bam, 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 knocked him down. You know, run to my uh, uh, corner, in my, in my in, in neutral corner. He got up. You know. And went after him again, and the bell rang. Okay, went back to my corner. My coach, my 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 ring was ecstatic, man. And they were like, "Yes, you got him! The, don't don't look, don't don't back up. Keep on him, keep on him." And in the third round, went after him again, and uh, my easiest fight knocked him out in the third round. Ran in the middle of the ring, dropped to my knees, lift my hands up to God. I said, thank you for the victory. Amen. <laughs> Ever since then, my life has never been the same. Mm. My life has never been the same. And uh, started having church. Listen to me. Start having Bible study in my camps. Mm. And many of my uh, uh, spa mates, you know. Would got, join you. Would join me. Some will accept Christ. Some will not, you know. But still, man. Listen, my heart has been touched by, I believe, the un, hallelujah, the, 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 the God that is unseen. And he has touched me. And uh, I tell you what, God is more real than anything else that mm. I know. And so, I, you know, I, I just want people to know, you know, that's the, that's the <coughs> purpose of my madness, man. You know, God has done tremendous thing in my life. And um, I was able to become a two-division world champion. You know, I remember going to um, Spain to fight, uh, um, what's Harold. his name? Abel Graham. Because I had a detached... Man, you know his whole career, huh? I had a detached yeah. retina, man. Oh, Earl Spence. Yes, yeah, that, I had a detached retina. That's why I'm not fighting this fight. Right. Detached retina as well? Yeah. Imagine right. that. <laughs> I had a detached retina, and um, 
you know, the 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 people in UK said uh, the the I think the commission there said they're not gonna allow the fight. So Dan King decided to have it in Spain. Mm. Yeah, and um, Smart man. went over there. You know, and um, I tell you what, um, Joe Cortez was the referee then again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as well. Yeah, he he refereed me there. Um, I may have called it. I may I may have called the wrong referee. Uh, this referee oh, was Mills Lane. Mills Lane was the first. Oh, was wow. the first one. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, Mil- yeah. Mills That's Lane right. was the one that said good shot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But Joe Cortez was the one to tell me I'm gonna stop this fight if you don't do something. Mm. <laughs> because in the in the in the second round, my eye started to swell. Mm. You know, this kid was a salpa. Oh man, he yeah, was Harold. one of the biggest as well. Harold, Harold Graham, and I switched. And when I switched, he came in for the kill. But uh, he didn't realize, man, that uh, I was also, you know, getting ready, you know, to 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 throw my, you know, my haymaker, man. <laughs> my haymaker. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I caught him with the right hook, and uh, right on the chin, uh, one punch, and he felt like an oak tree, <laughs> man. And he was out. Oh, thank God, he's all right. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And. Um, uh, we became good friends, you know, just like um, Gerald McLennan. Mm-hmm. We became good friends. You know, I went to him. I prayed with him, man. You know what I'm saying? I prayed with him. And uh, here it is, his son now. I'm training his son. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, what a legacy, man. And uh, I just give all the honor and the praise to God, man. Well, Julian, uh, we have a few questions, and by a few, I mean a lot. Obviously, you being a legend, the people want to ask you things. First one coming from Ruin of 504. It says, uh, if you had the chance, what would you do differently in the McCullen or McKellen fights? Oh, boy. Um, Mike McCollum, the first fight. Uh, I, something with the McCollums. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> that last MCC last Mike week. McCollum was from Jamaica. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I was green. I must say I was green. Uh, Mike McCollum was a, a, a really um, tremendous boxer, body snatcher. Um, you know, I remember getting tum in my eye, though. I remember getting low blows. Uh, I remember uh, the, his corner man was the, the bulldog. Yeah. Yo, man, the bulldog. If you know who the bulldog is, you know what I'm saying? Um uh, I, I can't bring his name right now, but he had the bulldog, and um, the bulldog would always something, something will happen, and I think Mike McCollum decided that hey, you know, I'm gonna tum you, I'm gonna blow you, and uh, but uh, I tell you what, Mike McCollum, I you know I I thank God that I had the opportunity because he, listen, that fight made me, that loss that I uh, 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 got. Because I was undefeated, I if Mike Tyson was at the other end of that ring, I I, I felt I would have knocked him out too. <laughs> That's how confident I was. Yeah, but that was self confidence. That was a lot of self in me. You know what I'm saying? A lot of pride. You know, and they said pride comes before fall. And um, you know, I realized that um, you know that fight humbled me, and um, that's when I really came to know Christ and. Um, my life changed, and I found out who Julian Jackson really was. And I was able to look Dan King in his eyes, you know, before I bow my head. But now I found out who Julian Jackson is, and the man that I am, I, I don't need to bow to nobody. You know what I'm saying? When God came into my life, I, I look, I, I realized who I am, man. And um, I looked at Dan King, and I said, hey, you know, I, you know, I need to, I need to, you know, receive a million dollar payday you know you need to give me a chance you know and he said okay julian you know after the fight with mccollum then i became a champion you know and i uh, had the opportunity to to uh you know go up in cl- in weight class against uh in Chubek. i mean not in Chubek, um what's his name graham Gra- michael uh, yeah graham and after that uh my because of my retina, you know, I think they tried to strip me of the belt mm. of the middleweight title. <laughs> yeah, and uh, but uh, the doctors, man, the people that did the surgery, you know, said no, Julian, 
his eyes, uh, they actually had to come and confess. They had to come before the board. Believe it or not, a lot of people don't know that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and they try to strip me. But um, because of the people that backed me, the doctors that came out and said, no, this his eye is just as good as it was before. And um, uh, he can box, you know? Mm-hmm. Huck. Um, obviously you were known throughout your career for your power. Yeah. Devastating power and considered to be one of the hardest pound for pound, you know, punches in, in the sport. What advice would you give to those? Because you were talking about that Mike McCollum uh, story coming in undefeated and taking your first loss. Right. What advice do you give to those young fighters? Because I feel like a lot of young fighters, they go on a knockout streak and then they have a rough fight or they take the first loss and then they lose a lot of hope. They lose right. a lot of momentum. What advice would you give them given that you went through something similar? Right, right. I, You know, I would tell them that, you know, uh, losing doesn't, you know, really stop you. Shouldn't shouldn't be able to stop you. As a matter of fact, um, I realized that my loss is what made me, you know, uh, 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 focus even more. Um, I, I believe um, your loss should be something that should push you forward even more. You know, uh, if you have a heart, if you have a, a desire to become anything, don't let one loss or one mistake, you know what I'm saying? Uh, in boxing, you could make one mistake, drop your hands and get knocked out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that shouldn't be the, the 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 reason for you giving up, you know, on your sport or on yourself or on your life, you know what I'm saying? I think it should be something that will push you forward, something that would encourage you even more to want to go out there and, um, you know, do your thing. Okay, uh, uh, the man that is that 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 is afraid to give life a chance is a coward. But the man that go out there and fail, you know what I'm saying? Even though he failed, he did something. He tried. You know what I'm saying? He did his best. But he's not like the one who didn't try because he was afraid to fail. Mm. Failing isn't, it shouldn't be something that, uh, 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 that is negative. It's something that is positive. You know what I mean? Because you tried. You went out there as a man and you did your best. And uh, 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 even though you lost, you know what? You should be a pro you should be proud of yourself, man. You did it. Something you tried. Hey, that's what I would I would say to anybody out there that's listening, that want to make themselves become anything. You know what I'm saying? Losing is not, uh, you know, something for you to just throw in the towel, man. You know, it's something I think for you to, you know, maybe put a, 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 a little more effort into and try a little harder. Come on, you could do it. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you are. I don't care what you've been through. Or you just, you know, pick yourself up, man, and let's go. Mm. You know, let's get it done. I got one for you, uh, Julian. Uh, excuse me, Julius. Uh, do you think Isaac Pitbull Cruz will be the next big name in boxing? The guy that fought yeah, Cruz. Uh, I don't know if he'll be a big name. Um, I think that he will give anybody a tough fight. I think he would uh, give anybody. A, he's just like that. <laughs> His tenacity is crazy. So uh, I think he'll be uh, trouble for any fighter. Uh, will he be great? I mean, uh, that just determines you know who fights him. You know, uh, in this sport, uh, a lot of a lot of your greatness depends on on your opposition right who who picks to fight you and who chooses um so all, all depends on where his his career leads him and what names he gets um a fighter like him you know usually don't get to fight everybody you know what i'm saying so <laughs> you're right about that yeah so we'll see I, mm. I i i have high hopes for him i think i think he has the the fighting style that that people like people want to see it so. uh and for you julian i have la dura who says, not really a question. Everything I know about boxing, I learned from Julian the Hawk Jackson. Just want to say, bless up, Pops. This is Cindy. I love what you're doing with Dion Pruitt. Keep it going. Also, line up them, line them females up. I'm coming. One love. <laughs> Cindy, wow. All the way to Hawaii. Mm. Man, love you, man. One love, man. All, all good. 
Yeah. Then all good. She she used to train with me. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah, amazing athlete. Yeah. Us, amazing. Wow. She loves the show, by the way. When she saw Yeah, no, she she's <laughs> she's been actually getting more um yeah. uh, engaging more. Uh she just became a a, a, a ringer and um yeah. I messed up her last name. I thought I thought Claudio Cla- yeah. was actually her first name, and I was, oh, oh, and, yeah. and she didn't add the A. I'm like, oh, Claudia, and she, she actually Claudia. sent me a personal oh, message. That, that, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we had a female influencer mm-hmm. who was on not too long ago. So her husband is really big. He's got like over a few 11 million subs on YouTube. Wow. It's called I Dubs. Okay. Oh, so wow. Cindy was trying to fight his wife. Oh, She's yeah, like, I'll right. spar her because she was trying to get into boxing. So, so, so yeah, Cindy's, Cindy's uh, like that. she like that. <laughs> she's been around. Yeah, Cindy, man, you, you know, hey, Cindy is Cindy's tough. Like believe yeah. me, she will give anybody a tough, tough yeah. fight. Yeah. There you go. Uh, we got Coach Myers for you in Connecticut. He says, "How was it sparring Sergio Martinez versus mm. sparring Triple G?" Mm. Oh man, <laughs> that's funny. Uh. Sergio, Sergio is uh, like he's like a surgeon, man. He's different, man. He picks shots, and he almost uh, uh, even through my mouthpiece, he almost uh, put a split in my my lip mm. uh, with the with the with his left hand with an uppercut. Man, he hit me, man. Remember that pop? Yeah. And I was like, pop. I think I think I think I, I gotta she cut my hair. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, no, nah, go back in there. <laughs> Yeah, Sergio is like that, man. He uh, and he, very awkward, very different, man. Uh, he'll sit in a in a certain area right in front of you, where and he likes to put his his forehead down, and so you can't really pick a good shot. But he's standing right there, and then he just throw that left, that same left he hit with uh he hit Williams. Uh, oh man, man yeah, he'll, it'll come out of nowhere and just whop. <laughs> uh, so uh, he a lot of thinking with Sergio. Um, uh, but that was great work, man. Uh. I, I love sparring with Sergio because he's different. He's southpaw. I never had I never had that experience before. Uh and Triple G, man, the hardest job of my life. <laughs> Toughest job of my life, man. That dude, man. Uh he hit like like a horse, man, like a horse kick you. Mm. What uh size gloves did you guys sparring? sparring? Uh, I think eighteen. Oh, okay. eighteen ounce, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. that boy, man. That boy. Damn, but a middleweight uh, sparring with eighteens. Yeah, man. It was crazy. Um, 16s is the normal. Yeah, yeah, 18s. Uh, we usually spar with 20s. We, we put, yeah, we spar with 20s. Yeah, so I was like, 18, nice. Wow. <laughs> I felt good with 18s. Yeah, uh, I was actually. Bro, Johnny <laughs> Rice uses 32 <laughs> ounce gloves. Have what? you ever seen that shit? What? 32. 32s. Damn. The, I, I thought Wilder was the heaviest because, you know, he has 28s, but wow. Johnny Rice just rivals, right? They're rivals. Yeah. Wow. 32 ounce that. gloves. That's wow. crazy, yeah, right? That's heavy. That's, are that's those heavy. Uh, weighted gloves? <laughs> I guess. Sounds like it. <laughs> At 32 yeah. ounces, they got to be. I got Jason that says, yeah. shout out to the boxing voice. Ask him besides himself, who is on his Mount Rushmore of the KO artists of all time? By the, by the have you ain't have to do Terry Norris. Like, okay, so he wants to say, you ain't have to do Terry Norris. By the way. You didn't have to do Terry Norris like that. <laughs> so who's on your Mount Rushmore of knockout artists? Not you can't put yourself on there though. Right, right. Um, I I looked at um, Triple G, of course. Um, mm. Canelo. Mm. I look at Canelo too. Um, even though he's not a one punch, not a one punch knockout artist, but right, right. <laughs> uh, he, he, he gets his job done, you know. And I like the way he does his job. So Canelo is one of those two, you know. Um, who else? Um, who, you know, Mike Tyson was one. You know, yeah. But do you really think pound for pound you was the hardest ever hook? Um, no, I never really looked at it like that. You know, um, tell the truth. Um, <laughs> uh, I've never, I've never really went into into a ring to knock guys out. Mm. Believe it or not. No, that's good you're saying that though, because yeah, it kind of goes back to what I was saying. I feel like a lot of a lot of fighters, you know, even even myself, right? Who I'm not a professional fighter, but I've stepped into the ring. Yo, everybody looks for the knockout. Yeah, yeah. Everybody looks for the knockout. But for those who are training and who are fighters, I think that's good because a lot of the young guys, they may get those knockouts early. Right. It may not always be like that. Mm-hmm. It, may, it may not always be like that. You know, so. I, I, I remember my trainer telling me, he says, Julian, you don't have to hit hard. All you got to do is throw the punch because your your mechanics are, are just 
right on line and right on time. Uh, it has a lot to do with your timing. It has a lot to do with your using your upper body and the lower body, okay, and turning uh, your hip into the punch. And uh, I became uh, an artist in doing that. I practiced that, and um, um, but my trainer always told me you don't have to crank up to punch hard, Julian. Just throw the punch, and you're gonna see it's going to have an effect. And I started doing that. And believe me, every time I throw and hit, uh, it had an effect. Mm. Uh, I got Brandon Maurice, top three punchers in boxing today. So I guess you already said Canelo. Who mm. else active do you think is a big puncher today? Two more. Okay, today. Mm -hmm. I would say... Um, the uh, Charlo, one of the Charlo brothers, okay, seems to be very good in in, in punches. What about Javante uh, Davis? They call him the Mini Mike Tyson. Oh yes, hey, yes, tank. yes. Yeah, yeah, I was tank, gonna say because he likes he yeah, likes Javante. Yeah, yeah, I love him. <laughs> he like yeah. watching. He like yeah, tank. Yeah, tank. Yo, yeah. I, I, I'm curious. Are you guys able to watch all fights down there? Like, do you guys yeah, have yeah. okay? Yeah, yeah, we get everything. Yeah, because because I know. Uh, I got a, a lot of family in Mexico, and I yeah. have to do so. I'm like, all right, is it going to be ESPN knockout today? <laughs> is it going to be TV Azteca? I'm yeah, like, yeah, where yeah. is it going to be at? Right, right, right. Yeah. For Julius, I got Ruin of 504 that says, what are the typical guidelines for a boxer diet? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, uh, so I, I, I've studied that quite a bit. Um, so for a fighter, uh, you want to keep high energy and high nutrition. But you also don't want to gain a lot, gain weight. Uh, so the best way to do that is low carb, low sugar, high fat. Mm. That's what you want. Mm. Uh, fat in food, uh, uh, mostly animal products or or nuts or or things like that, uh, ha carry the most amount of minerals. Uh, so you want to have high fat. Uh, you want to have low carbs, low sugar because uh, that stays in your body. That's gonna if you don't burn that, it's gonna turn into to sugar, it's gonna stay on you. So uh, low carbs, low sugar, high fat, uh, you have energy and you won't gain weight. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, for the Hulk, we have James Valdez in San Antonio, Texas. What's the backstory behind the nickname Hawk? Oh man, um, you know what, a friend in school, um, you know, we back home in the Virgin Islands, we have a lot of chicken hawks, mm -hmm. yeah. you know what I'm saying? And every time the chicken hawks are out flying, the chickens run. They go hiding, you know. <laughs> and he says, man, you know what? I'm going to call you the hawk because the chick, the chickens are always running from you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> they were ducking you, hawk. Yeah. Uh, so that's where I got my name from. from uh, Iram Fuertes, I'm a very good friend, man. Yeah. Sounds Spanish. Yes, yeah, he is. Iram, oh. yeah, he's... Yes. Uh, for your son, Brandon Lenz in Houston says, thanks for coming on the show, Julius. You and your dad both have exuberant positive energy. Since you've been in there with Benavidez, mm -hmm. what do you think of Benavidez versus Canelo? How does that play out? And do you feel Canelo is avoiding David Benavidez? Oh, man. I, I tell you about this every time. First time I met David was in camp with Triple G. Uh, I think we was getting ready for... Um, uh, uh, What's his name in Europe? I can't remember his name. That was like the second camp. Uh, we met David and uh, Coach Abel was like, yo, do some rounds with this kid. Uh, he's like 19. All right, cool. Man. <laughs> the setup. I said, yo, he's nine. He what? How old is he? 19? <laughs> he's like, yeah, he's having, he come out here and do camp all the time. I said, what? With, with G? He's like, yeah. What? Yo, I said, man, this dude. Yeah. I, whatever, Special, you, whatever you're doing, yeah. That's the only man I see giving uh, Canelo problems at 168. But can he win? I think so. Wow. I, Will he win? I think so. Mm -hmm. I, I would put money on, on David. What are you guys doing uh, Saturday? You, when do you fly back? Um, Pops, you, Pops fly back Saturday. Oh. Um, I fly back Sunday morning. Okay. Damn. Um, so I, I'm trying to go to the fights, uh, to the Stevenson fights. Because you guys brought up Benavidez so much. It's a coincidence. Uh, he's actually staying at our uh, affiliate house, mm -hmm. um, holding camp. Okay. And we'll be there Saturday to watch the fight with him live. Wow. Oh, that's it dope. would have been amazing hey. if the Hawk and his son could have been in the living room with us watching that uh, fight. Yeah, Can you imagine? Hey, that's my boy. David. Man. Yo, I got David, 
his father, yeah. Malinaji, then the two of y'all, that would be wow. like a oh, fucking a boxing fan's <laughs> dream. That's crazy. Well, we, we are good, man. We are good. Yeah, man. That's, <laughs> our, that's our people, man. Yeah. I, actually, when I when I got the offer to fight uh, Jose, um, I had did another camp with David right. in Big Bear I, when he got ready for the sh- final showtime. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, so I sparred David uh, for two camps before the, the third camp. And um, I was I told my dad, I need David here. <laughs> I need David because he's the hardest work I've, I've ever harder than Triple G because yeah. that boy could throw hands and he it don't it don't matter what position he's in where his feet is at you you can be on the rope in the middle of the ring he gonna throw five six seven six rounds man straight <laughs> that dude man. wow and amazing uh I have Coach Myers that says to Julian and he is from Connecticut what's up champ. You being a two-time middleweight champ, where do you rate Gennady Golovkin as an all-time middleweight? Gennady Golovkin, Triple G. Mm-hmm. Well, I you know, I think he's up there, man. I think he's he's up there. This kid uh, also is um, is special, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, well, uh, determination, uh, uh, heart. You know he's up there with 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 the top, um, you know. Uh, twenty weights t- tied B Hop for twenty uh, successful title defenses. Yeah. So obviously they hold uh they share the record for that. Right. Um. Supposed to be fighting Canelo come September. That's right. Yeah, obviously again. Canelo still has to get through Dimitri Bivol next weekend, right. but. Um, if that fight does take place in September, how do you see Golovkin holding up in that third fight, Hawk? Uh, uh, I I feel that uh, Golovkin is a little more um, older you know, over the hill mm. than than um, you know um, our boy um, Canelo. Canelo. But Hawk, you telling me there wasn't a fight where people thought you were over the hill and you 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 yes, pulled it off? Yes, yes, yes. Um, when I when I when I won the uh, the the middleweight championship the second time. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. People thought I was uh, again a kid from France. I don't remember his name. But um, you know, I believe that, you know, you know, and uh, I also felt it too, you know, as fighters you you can feel it too, man. Mm. Yeah. You know, there are a lot you know, of fighters. You know there. when it's over. We can tell when we're we're getting to the place where it's going to get over. It's gonna, it's you know, there. finish. So that's why I, I never came back. After um, I decided to retire, you know what I'm saying, uh, and you know, I guess just you know the the, the transfer of, of of me coming, you know, into the coaching helped a lot, helped me a lot, a whole lot because I was given offers, you know, that um, you know. You would take an offer though if Sugar if if Sugar Ray was involved. Yeah, I, I mean, not 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 for not not for. So you want an exhibition sparring, with Sugar Ray? For exhibition, yes. For exhibition, yeah, I you remember know. that by you. Like, I, yo, I tried, I, but I'm right thinking. now you would take an exhibition with Sugar Ray. Right now, yeah, because I see all these legends coming. You see Julio Cesar Chavez. He fought. Uh, what's your man? Arce. Yeah. Arce. Then Eric Morales is fighting. Yeah, I saw. Come I saw, on, help I me. Saw that. Barrera, I, Barrera. Uh, I tried. Miguel I tried. Cotto, Miguel Cotto fought or is fighting Marquez. That was supposed to happen. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. But all exhibitions. But we tried, and um, um, you know, I, you know, I, you know, I always wanted to fight Sugar Ray Leonard, even yeah. when I was a fighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, he he was supposed to fight me uh, after the um, the Terry Norris fight, mm-hmm. but mm. he chose Terry Norris instead of me. But at the press conference, he said, "I saw." And I went. I thing. went to New York. Yeah. And uh, you know, I stopped the, the 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 press conference and I said, "Man, none of you guys could be calling yourself champion. You were supposed to fight me." Yeah. And he yeah. said on the on the microphone, he said, "Julian, I'm gonna tell you right now, you hit too hard." <laughs> <laughs> we went to dinner with him. He said this, he said the same thing. Sugar Ray said, How <laughs> "Sugar Ray," and I said, "No." And uh, you know, I yeah. said, "Man, wow," because he said he would fight the winner. Mm. Yeah, he did. Uh, he was supposed to fight the winner. At, at your guys' press conference. Yes. I saw a video the other day. Yes. And um, he didn't. And, uh, you know, that yeah, yeah. sort of, you know, put a, a, a wrench in my wheel, man. You know what I'm saying? And uh, that fight would have, I believe, really, you know, yeah, take yeah. me to the to the top. But it didn't happen. And, um, hey. But, um, I, I, you know, with, with um, Sugar Ray Leonard, if he had taken that fight, you know, when yeah, I yeah. when I decided that I would love to fight him, you know, 
uh, for exhibition, you know. Yeah, yeah. Let's get it on, you know. Tommy Hearns called him out too. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. them but guys. Tommy, we gotta see you in the exhibition, Hulk. We Tommy gotta see you because serious. <laughs> BB, we gotta see you in the exhibition because I think a lot of people criticize these exhibitions, mm -hmm. but I I love it right because I'm young. Yeah. So. When I got to see Mike fight, yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Mike shouldn't have been fighting. Mm -hmm. So to see him and Roy get in there, you know, same yeah. thing with Roy. When Roy I was watching, too, right. you know, I, I caught Roy at the, the end of his prime. So, right. you know, uh, I didn't get to watch you in your prime. But I did I did get to see you in the corner before. So mm. um, who was it that fought? Uh, you, who, uh, who was it that fought Charlo? Yeah, oh John, John, yeah, John yeah. yep, John. Yeah. I was, I was at that fight. So yeah, we was doing good too, man. We were winning. Uh, that I, fight. Yeah, I, I think you guys were winning that yeah. fight before that yeah, came. You got so. caught, yeah. yeah. But other than that, man, you know what? I, like I always say, boxing. You know, there's something special about the fighters, man. You know, regardless of what they go through, regardless of what happens, you know what I mean. The, there's, there's something about boxers that uh, I believe brings out the best uh, of, of that individual. You know, and um, you know, I, I, and I like to say this, you know, to all the fighters out there, man. You know, let's let's show the world, man, that you know, boxing is a sport that can really, you know, uh, help somebody and bring them out of, you know, a, a place of of, of, of of what confusion, a place of uh, fear, uh, you know, doubt. You know, I really believe that boxing has done a lot for me. You know, and um, look at Gerald McClendon and and now his son. You know, and uh, you know this 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 uh, opportunity for him right yeah, now. For him, yeah. I mean, it it has lifted him you know, up yeah. so much. Uh, the brother has been in prison, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? No, we had him here the other day. Yeah. He has an amazing story. Uh, amazing story, man. And but yet, you know what? He says this boxing man. It, 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 it's really showing me that, hey, you know, there's more to life, you know what I'm saying, than, than what I've been going through, you know, out there in, 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 on the streets, mm. you know, and um, I want to do something about it, and boxing is the thing. Yeah, no, look, uh, great story. You no, know, I got a bunch of Go ahead, go ahead. Justin in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, excuse me, he says, uh, if you didn't do boxing, what would you be doing? <laughs> oh boy, hey, uh, you know what? I love to run, man. I love mm. track and field. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I used to run like a deer, you know. And um, I don't know. Uh, I think uh, track and field would have been something that I would have loved to do. You know, been involved with. This next one is from T. Anderson. He's actually been in the ring uh, and had an exhibition after the age of forty-two. So Whoa. shout out to T. Anderson. Um, he says, what's your favorite punch, left hook, right straight, or was it another shot? And what was your favorite combo? Just curious because you had power in both hands. Right. My left hook, everybody was afraid of the right hand, but the left hook was the, you know, the, 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 the sleeper. sleeper. Yeah. <laughs> the left hand was the sleeper. Um, you know, but like, you know, all my punches, yeah, man, was, 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 you know, I believe any fighter can can develop a good punch, you know. Uh, it's just that um, some fighters, the timing is off, you know. Uh, we have a lot of fighters that are out there that um, you know, very fast, man, quick hands, but there's no power. Mm -hmm. Why? You know, why is there no power in that speed, in that, you know? Uh, I think it has to do with the timing of the, the upper body and the lower body. And... Um, my trainer told me, he says, if you can, if you can marry these two, okay, every punch you throw, okay, is going to have an effect. And if you look at any puncher, look at the the way they punch, just check them out and see that they have gotten that that maybe that 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 that, uh, that thing down to the point where, you know, the the, the split seconds, you know, of of, of being able to Show your right hand and have your, you know, your right feet turn with it at the same time uh, develops a lot of power, you know, in your punches. Mm. I have New York Bullet. Blessings, champ. Being a legend yourself, who were the legends you looked up to when you were coming up? Uh, Emil Griffin. 
I know you, th- you guys talk about champions from the Virgin Islands. Mm-hmm. Emil Griffith was one of them. Um, way back, he was an old, old fighter. Um, but um, he's a, he was a six-time world champion. Yeah. Mm. Emil Griffith. You may have never heard of him, right? I haven't, no. Yeah, oh, man. man. Was a beast. He was a beast. As a matter of fact... Uh, he's the reason we have four ropes. It mm. used to be three. Yeah. But he, he killed the guy. Killed there was a guy that... Uh, I forgot his name, man. Oh, we were just uh, talking yeah, about him the other day yeah. with um, with with uh, the referee uh, Joe, Joe Cortez. Yeah, yeah, Joe Cortez said, "Man, that kid, boy, when he hit, wow, I don't know. Uh, it's amazing that uh, he was from also St. Thomas, even from the Virgin Islands. It's the water. It's the water. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the water. Uh, the water. <laughs> For you, Julius, uh, we have uh, La Dura back. Cindy says, when are y'all signing my boy, Abdul, a.k.a. Jim Tom? <laughs> What's the last name? Uh, Smith. Abdul, yeah, Abdul's a beast, man. But um, mentally, he just got to get there. So soon, man. He's he's almost there. He's almost there. Yeah, he, his last fight really proved that... Uh, you know he's willing to step up. You know, and uh, because of that, you know we we are definitely gonna do something with him. Soon, mm-hmm. yeah. Definitely, he, he, was sparring, he was sparring with Gerald, and uh, he's been looking good with yes, Gerald too. Yes, so. sure, sure. Yeah. We got King Amin in uh, North New Jersey. Peace, champ. Do you think that punching power is something that can be developed? And what do you think made you such a powerful puncher? Yes, it can be developed, but some fighters are born with it, mm-hmm. and I I think I was one of them that was born with it, you know, to a degree. And um, uh, also, even though I, 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 you know, I was able to punch real hard, heavy-handed, um, I still had to, you know, work on my timing, work on getting my uh, my mechanics, you know, in line. So, uh, you know, yeah, you can, you can develop it too. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Good question from David Maldonado, New York City. What's up, champ? You was part of one of the greatest middleweight eras of boxing. Fighters such as James Tony, yourself, young Roy Jones, Gerald McCullen, and young B-Hop. All fought at 160 pounds at that time. How would today's 160-pound middleweight guys such as Canelo Alvarez, Jamal Charlo, and Demetrius Andre do in that era? Wow. Wow. It would be interesting, you know, mm-hmm. because uh, uh, Demetrius is a, a tremendous boxer, mm-hmm. you know, got some power too. You know what I'm saying? We have a lot of these guys that are good boxers and uh, working on their power, you know what I'm saying? So I think it would have been, uh, uh, you know, a tremendous, um, you know, feat. I, I think that, uh, wow, um, boxing and punching, you know, it's just like Ali Frazier, you know. Um, uh, it would definitely be uh, a fight that people would want to buy, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, I got Steve in the UK. Hey, champ, thanks for coming on the show. It sounds like you've had a successful life after boxing that many other boxers struggle to achieve once retired. Case in point, Hurl Graham. His story after boxing is really sad. What did you do to stay happy without the lure and the lights and high, oh, excuse me, without the lure of the highlights wow. uh, that professional boxing gives fighters? Thank you for your time, Steve, all the way in the UK. One love, Steve. God bless you. I think it's because of the grace of God. I think it's because of, uh, you know, my life. that uh, He entered into my life, got into in my life, and turned my life around, man. You know, and um, I was able to see things differently, you know. Uh, my eyes were open, you know. Uh, you know, the darkness left me, uh, if, I, if I could put it that way. And um, uh, I'm, I enjoy life. I enjoy people, you know what I'm saying, Um you know, I don't look down at anybody, you know. Um, it don't matter who you are. You could be on the street corner, man. And um, uh, I believe that God looks at that man in the street corner just as, the, you know, the same way he looks at me. You know, so I, I you know, I, I tend to, uh, I believe, um, honor people, you know, irregardless of, you know, where you are in life. And God can pick you up because he did that for me. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think... <laughs> He's an island boy at heart, man. Pop, he gets some good food and he go to the beach. He's happy. He's, <laughs> he good. <Nice>. He good. <laughs> um, 
I wanted to get your breakdown on uh, Earl Spence versus Terrence Crawford if that fight happens. Do Woo. you believe it happens? And then who are you picking? Are you picking the island boy in uh, Earl Spence being from Jamaica? <laughs> his dad, yeah. Oh, yeah? His I father, didn't know that. His dad, yeah. I didn't realize that. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Nah, I love Crawford, man. Oh. Yeah. Good. You know what? Between these two fighters, they have something that is different from a lot of the other fighters, too. They have timing. Their timing is amazing. But I think Crawford timing is a little more better than uh, 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 Earl Spence. Spence. Earl Spence. And, um, you know, uh, he's unpredictable. A lot of people look at uh, uh, Crawford and they say, man, I'm going to walk over this kid. He's, he's, he's skinny, nothing. Yeah, he's skinny. He's you know, he don't have nothing. But he's unpredictable. And uh, I think that's what has been really affecting a lot of other fighters. When like, I'm going to knock him out, man. I'm going to do this. But when they go out there, the kid could punch. You know what I'm saying? The kid got good timing, you know, good leg work. He's a salpa as well as a, you know, orthodox. And he's all that, you know, it's just amazing. And um, I, 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 I'm I, a, a Crawford, um, you know, uh, fan. Man, right, fan right now. Do you think he's biting off more than he can chew? His uh, objective is to fight Earl Spence, undispute in one fight, move up and fight Jermel Charlo, who's right now fighting May 14th for the Undisputed versus Brian Castaño. So in his mind, if Jamel wins, he wants to beat Earl, and I quote, beat your cheerleader, wow. Jamel Charlo. Wow. <laughs> well, you know what? You know, uh, uh, sometimes fighters look at other fighters and they see things that you may not see. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. they are fighters, fighters that I fought that um, I looked at and I saw something in that fighter and I know I'm, I'm, I'm going to get that. I could beat that. I could get that. And um, some uh, 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 of the people around you said, man, I don't think you should fight that fight, man. You know, I don't think you should fight that fight because I'm not seeing what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, when you do go out there and you fight and you be, see, I told you, you know what <laughs> I'm saying? I told you. But I believe that's the case right now with uh, Crawford. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He's seen something that a lot of other people are not seeing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I believe that uh, 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 he's going to really um, raise some eyebrows, you know? Mm. And uh, what's your thoughts on next week's big fight? Canelo Alvarez obviously is back. He's moving up to 175 pounds, challenging yet again another mm -hmm. champion in Dimitri Bivol. Um, mm -hmm. Can he do it or is he biting off too much? And more than he can chew. No, nah, I think he can do it. I, you know, this kid is amazing, man. Wow. You know, uh, I remember way back, Julius uh, John uh, almost got the opportunity to fight, um, you know. Yeah. Uh, I think it was like for like a, a, a minor WC title. Yeah, minor WC title. We had the opportunity to fight this guy, man. Who, Canelo? Yeah. yeah. So would you turn it down? No, they it did. just didn't happen. Did they it? turned it down. Yeah, they, they, yeah. they turned it down. It didn't happen. Mm. And uh, I really believe that it would have been uh, a tremendous fight. Mm. But uh, right now, I tell you what, this kid has grown so much. Yeah, a lot. A lot. Okay? Uh, I thought that uh, it was a certain time that, you know, you, you, you stop uh, going from, from one level to the next level to the next level. I mean, this, this, this kid just keep piling up these levels, you know? Mm. And um, it's just amazing. Uh, his timing... You know, his coach has been doing a good job with him, for sure. But his timing is, is immense. It's amazing. You know, uh, and a lot of people don't realize that timing has a lot to do with boxing. Believe it or not. You could have good timing, no speed. You know what I'm saying? No speed. You're not as quick as this, but, but your timing uh, can actually beat the speed. Mm. Okay? Your timing can beat the speed, and I'm just, I just want to leave that with, with, you know, with the audience and uh, think about it. <laughs> um, I got two more from the people, but I got to ask myself, you, you spoke so highly of Crawford and Canelo. Who's your pound for pound? Who's over who? Who's number one? Um, number one? Who's number one? Um, you know, as far as, um, you know, Canelo. Mm. Canelo, I mean, as far as power, as far as... Far as uh, you know, uh, timing and, um, you know, uh, you know, if you really look at the way they train, look at the way they train, you can see they develop uh, uh, their, their skills, their timing skills, you know, is something that uh, 
you know, they, they have been working on for years. And um, I think Canelo is the man right now. Brandon Lenz in Houston says, for fighters who get labeled pillow-fisted, are there any specific exercises you can do to build punching power? Oh, yeah, you know. Oh, definitely. Um, I remember, uh, you know, in the Virgin Islands, uh, whenever I, um, you know, had the opportunity and I'm, I'm, I'm up close to a tree, <laughs> Uh, I'm not saying that this is, you know, the right thing to do. Right thing for anybody to do <laughs> when I, when I'm close to a tree. I remember him telling us this. Too. Okay, uh, I try to knock the leaves off of the tree uh, if it's, it's low enough, and I I try to see how fast I can punch to try to take that leaf that leaf that leaves mm -hmm. knock it off and just use my 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 you know, and I've been doing that. Uh, for years, and uh, believe me, I, I I think it has a lot to do with timing, with uh, you know, uh, with speed. Um, you prefer timing over the power. You've been using that timing where it yes, it, it's 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 uh, my coach uh, Willie Wilhelm George said to me. He says, um, you know, if you can hit somebody in the right place at the right time, okay, timing has a lot to do with it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and. Um, uh, if if you are off now, if you are off and you hit the person at the same place, same time, it wouldn't have the effect because you're off. Something is off in your me in, in in your in, in your, your mechanics in your mechanics, and because that is off, your power is going to be off. I don't know if you understand that, mm -hmm. but but if it's on, believe me, if you look at Spence, if you look at uh, you know these kids, these guys who could hit Canelo. If you look at these guys that punch, okay, you notice that they, 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 their timing is is always there. It's right on point. They hit the mark at the right time. You know they they caught them in the right place at the right time. Anybody that is knocked out get hit at the right time, the right place at the right time mm. because of timing. Last one, Hawk. Long interview. We do apologize. Thank you, guys, to both of you for your time. Dual Ingram and Compton says, what do you think of boxers that make excuses after fights? Wilder, Deontay Wilder, Tiafimo Lopez, Dillian White come to mind. Right. To me, they never, they're never going to be the same. Yeah, you know, um, yeah, I believe so too, man. I, I, you know, I don't think you should make excuses. If you lose, you lose. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, if something happens... Okay, you know, uh, pride, you know, would want us to, hey, man, I got Tom in my eye. When I fought against Mike McCollum, I got Tom in my eye. And uh, I believe that was the thing that affected me the most. So I want to get that out, you know what I'm saying? But I accepted my loss. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to accept it before uh, I even tried to, um, you know, make any kind of excuse that people would say is an excuse, but it's it is something that I experienced, something that I you know that happened to me. So um, you know, uh, uh, I think ex you know excuses really don't you know show the type of person that you really are. If you out there winning, 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 and then the next thing you know you lost, but you realize that you can't take your loss. You know, you lose a lot of. Nota, you know, notoriety, a lot of credibility, credibility. Yeah. 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 credibility. You lose a lot of because people are like, man, he can't. Look. Yo, come yeah. on, what's up, man? Take your loss, man. You lose. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I, if you do that, I think people will respect you even more, man. Good fighter, man. You know, and uh, I'm, I'm gonna come back though. You know what I'm saying? And people respect that even more. I think guys should look at that and, and realize that. You know, they, sh they should uh, take their losses, man, and, uh, you know, step up. I don't want to rehash old topics, but I'm sure you knew Mark Breland. Mm -hmm. What were your thoughts when Wilder alleged that Breland spiked his water and was part of the reason that he lost to Tyson Fury in the second fight. I don't believe that. I, 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 I don't believe that. I know Mark, you know, not, not as a close friend, but I know him. And, um, you know, I don't think uh, he would have done that. You know what I'm saying? I, I felt that um, it was, uh, you know, 
something that happened because of your style, the way you box, you know. Um, I just felt that, um, you know, it was was a, f a really sad thing, you know, to see uh, something like that happen. Um, I've heard a lot of people saying that uh, fighters are the most selfish people in the world, um, but um, I would I would I would say that uh, that's not true. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I, I think it has a lot to do with your 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 you know your personality, the type of person that you are. You know what I mean? Um, I've you know I've always been I've always been honest to my coaches because. I realized that they, you know, they're they're risking their their lives for, for me too. You know what I'm saying? They're 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 out there trying to keep me alive. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, as a coach, I I want to do my best, you know, to protect my fighter. And I realized that now as a, a coach, before, you know, sometimes you 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 look at your coach and sometimes if he make a mistake, you know, you wanna you wanna re, you know, crucify him. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I don't think that uh, is, is, is the right thing to do. And um, um, irregardless of what happened between, um, what's his name? Wilder. Fury? Fury and Wilder. And Wilder. You know, I, I, I don't think that Mark Breland, um, you know, spiked his, or spiked his uh, water or all that stuff. You know, I think that was just excuses. All right. I know I said that was my last. Have you watched the Fondora fight with Erickson Lubin? Eric no, Lube. did he watch it? No, I yeah. you remember uh, from the talk kid, we made a big. Oh bang. yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. watched it? Oh my goodness, yeah, I watched yeah. it. What do you say to those people? Because you've been in the sport Woo. so many years, there are people out here that are saying that Sebastian Fondura is a height bully. <laughs> Does that exist in boxing? <laughs> um, yeah, it can. It can. Exist. Oh wow, okay. It can exist. Uh, Explain, please. Um, you know, the advantage. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The height. You know what I'm saying, and um, the thing is, this 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 kid can punch. You know, he can hit too. Uh, he has the height. And what happens uh, 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 if I'm gonna fight a guy that is uh, six inches, you know, shorter than me? I'm gonna really take advantage of him. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit him in the in in you know in every place that I can, I'm going to use the jab, I'm going to, you know, ain't no way he's going to be able to hit me, you know what I'm saying? You have the advantage, and um, tall fighters, uh, if you look at uh, Fury, you know, he has an advantage over a lot of, of the fighters too, and um, uh, being as good as they are too, you know what I'm saying? Uh, what makes it difficult is that they are good boxers as well. You can have a tall fighter that really can't box, really don't know how to use his tools, can't use his height. You know what I'm saying? But you have these guys that are very excellent boxers. They can use their height. Fury is not um, all that good of a puncher, but he can use his height. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but Pandora, what's his name? Yeah, Fandora. Fandora can punch, and he got the height. So he's a lot more dangerous than uh, 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 Tyson. We've interviewed countless fighters over the last 11 years that say height doesn't mean anything. When I see a weigh-in in the uh, face-off and I'm like, oh, my God, he's so much taller than him. Oh. For instance, Barrios Tank. Yeah. Yes, it was not as easy as it was normally mm -hmm. for Tank, but everyone still had Tank as the favorite. No one really gave that height advantage of Barrios. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't, that, that height advantage didn't make him the favorite. And, and I think yeah. I, I think that kind of goes to what you were saying, Hawk, because obviously Fury can box. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, he Barrios. lately he doesn't he hasn't chose to as much. He didn't need but to, but need to. you know he can box. Well, he, he he boxed in that Dillian White fight. He did. He, he did. was on that jab. He yeah. was. <laughs> that's how he set him up with the uppercut yeah. because he kept yeah. flicking right that out. jab. So when he rushed in, time timing timing. <laughs> it, was, it was a perfectly timed uppercut. Timing uh, timing. Yeah, but the height has a lot to do with it, man. Um, that fight with Tank. Um, and Barrios. And Barrios. I, I don't believe that Barrios use it. No, use his height. He doesn't fight that way. No. 
And Fandora doesn't either. Fandora, Fandora doesn't. Fandora, doesn't Fandora loves exactly. being on the he fights inside. on the inside. I yeah. feel like he'd rather be on the inside. Yes. yes. Yeah. When we met him in Big Red, it's the same thing his dad said. He's like, uh, he fights like a Mexican. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get him not to. Right. And he fights like a Mexican. He right. just loves it. He, Bro, he, his inside. dad has like a, a, a ring in his backyard, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, that's what he said. <laughs> when we down the hill, we train in, in my yard. Yeah. And crazy. So it's amazing. But well, he said because of the pandemic is what got him. Yeah, but to... they're using it full time now. That's yeah. it. No, that's I the mean, spot now. You have it. Why not use Why it? Not? Right. Yeah. right. You have it. Right. Well, guys, we're not going to keep any more of your time. If you have any social media, if you want to give out the name of the gym, any organizations you guys are part of, your business, you know, right. if you do catering both here in the States or only over there, let everybody know where to find you and how to follow any of your projects. Yeah, man. If you want to learn to punch, if you want to learn to knock guys out, come to the Virgin Islands, man. <laughs> I believe I can fly, you know, boxing program. Is is kicking? Uh, 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 you know, we got Gerald McLennan working with us now. We got, um, you know, uh, our, our, our homie, yeah, you know, yeah, Dion Pewitt. We've got yeah, he Abdul actually, Smith. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. We we've got some amateurs down there that are uh, uh, actually um, amazing. You know? Yeah, yeah. Them kids coming up fast. Actually. So uh, again, you know, if anybody wants to come to the Virgin Islands, come on, give us give us a call. Now, yeah, you, you been to the Virgin Islands? I have not, man. No. Dominican Republic, yeah, everywhere around there. Yeah, yeah. I even went to uh, Jamaica and the Bahamas, but not the Virgin Islands yet. Yeah, yeah. Um, Might yeah. have to make Let a trip know. out there. Yeah, Let yeah. us know, man. Let I know. wanted to go to uh, St. Martin. You don't even need a passport for that. Saint when I didn't have a passport. It was many years Saint ago. But I, I was like, oh, let me go to St. Martin. That's actually yeah. where, uh, I don't know if you know, um, Delorme was born there. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, he's uh, Dominican parents, born in San Martin, raised in Puerto Rico. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, me and my dad both uh, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I'm at Julius the Chef One. My dad is Julian underscore the Hawk underscore Jackson. Um, and yeah, send us, hit us up, man. We uh, we we love the sport, man. We love the sport. I'm stealing some more time from you yeah. now that you got the same detached retina as your father and wow. Earl. We all seen him make a miraculous comeback where yeah. people didn't think he can do it. He took no tune <laughs> right. up. He went in there in a unification off of that surgery. Yeah. How do you think you're going to make out? Do you think this will hinder your career or you expect to be back? Uh <laughs> Uh yeah, I'm I'm probably done, man. I I I uh I'm I'm similarly to my dad. I really have a heart for uh my people, helping people. Uh I run a cafe and bakery at home for a nonprofit. I work with at-risk kids. Um, that, that's a big part of my life. Um, and uh, the reason I managed is because of Dion. Uh, he, after the Olympics, similar to my dad, he's like, I want to go pro. I don't know what to do. And I was like, I, I got you, <laughs> you know? Uh, and when, when I got this, 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 I've been trying to fight for like three years and right. the hurricanes, we had two hurricanes and the pandemic. Uh, I, I was getting lined up to fight. Uh, actually who's David's fighting next? Uh, David Lemieux. Lemieux. I was going to fight Lemieux. Damn. They called for an offer and then Lemieux said, nah. Uh, so it, in between the, the, this time, and I've just been, I'm a businessman at heart. My, my mom calls me Obama. <laughs> I'm like the Obama uh, at home, she says. So uh, when I got this retina, she was like, yeah, I, I saw what your father went through. I, you, you're done. Mm. I mom promised, made the call. Yeah, she was like, yeah. And my wife, she's like, nah, I already didn't like you fighting. So <laughs> after that. And we hear, uh, so. I mean, uh, Gerald told us that you're super successful in the Bahamas with your catering company. Yeah, man, and, yeah. you know, you, you're I've obviously doing. Food Network, doing... Cooking Channel. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I wrote a cookbook. You say uh, you're like the David Ramsey of the Bahamas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I cook for Gordon, Gordon, Ramsey, Gordon, yeah. Gordon. David, I'm thinking David David's is the finance, the finance guy. guy. David. I used him. <laughs> I used him, let me tell you, bro. Yeah, yeah, for real. So I cook for people for love and hip hop. I, I, I do. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I've done a lot. Uh, right. And so I, I don't have to fight, you know, so. Um, but you still love it. I love the sport, man. So I'm, I'm good with helping people and uh, and uh, managing and, and making sure fighters are treated well. So right. I'm, I'm good with that. Well, no, that's great. Well, all great. right, we're going to take this quick intermission, take a couple of pictures with the Hawk and Julius Jackson as well. We'll be right back after a couple of messages. Yo, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the like, subscribe, and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the Patreon dot com backslash the boxing voice we have tons of exclusive from border wars and title betting shows the list goes on and on and on but in addition to that if you guys have questions for fighters trainers and promoters this is where you can submit them we will run out get these questions answered and put it back on the show just for you guys appreciate it peace